Bibles to Luke, the 24th chapter. We're going to spend the majority of our time there this morning. Before that, I want to say it's so good to see you. It's so good to be with you. I'm glad to be home. And I'm glad that we get to do this together to remember the resurrection of our Lord. We get to do this every first day of the week to commemorate the body, the blood given for us, and to give strict attention to not only what it represents now, but what it means then and what it meant then and until the time that he returns. It's truly a beautiful day, and I'm thankful that you're present and we get to spend this time together. If this is your first time here, we want you to know how welcome that you are and how much your presence means to us. As I said, we're going to look to the Gospel of Luke to the resurrection day and to one group of people whom were affected by it and make some connections that affect us as well. So <clears throat> if you're open there in Luke chapter 24, we're given the opportunity to listen to a conversation between Jesus and two others who were traveling to a village called Emmaus. And I want to Read those first eight verses together, and then we will make some applications through the rest of the chapter. In verse 1, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices that they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and they went out and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes, and the women were terrified, and they bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead, asked the men. He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, It is necessary for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and to be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. It's the first day of the week, and they've gone to see to take the spices prepared for the body. It was a Jewish custom that was held in very sacred and sanctimonious regard. And they're surprised to see that he's not there. And so then in verse 13, our story picks up with these two guys walking to a village in Emmaus. And it says... On the very same day. So we know that this is still the first day of the week. This is the day that Jesus has risen. And he encounters these two on the road. And it says that in the same day, the two of them were going to the village called Emmaus and about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. Verse 15 tells us that they talked all the things that were going on. And these two disciples were distraught over what had happened to the Lord. And though they don't realize it, later in the chapter they will recognize him. They will see him for who he is. But at this moment they don't. But it won't be because his appearance to them on the road to Emmaus brings their attention to the fact that he was the one who had been crucified a few hours before. It was something else. It was something else altogether. And so moving on, it says then, he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk? He wants to know what the matter is. What's the matter with you guys? Why are you upset? What's going on? What's happened? And it won't be his voice falling on their ears that catches their attention that this one who's now walking with them was the same one that they were talking about. It was something else. And again, these two were not aware of who was walking with them as they rehashed the events of the past three days. And so then they go on in greater detail when Jesus says, what things about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a, a prophet, a powerful in word and deed, and before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition to some of our women amazed us, they went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. 
They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women said, but they did not see Jesus. So they recount this to this stranger who's now walking with them. Telling him all that had happened. And I'll suggest to you that Jesus didn't ask this because he didn't know. He's trying to bring them along with him into where he is. And it's at this point that Jesus finally speaks up. And he said to them, how foolish you are. And how slow to believe that all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. At this point, Jesus finally says, beginning at the scriptures, beginning with the prophets, beginning with Moses, all the things that they knew well, and yet they could not see him. They still didn't recognize him. It was something else. And so as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. And they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. And so as it's drawing late and they get near Emmaus, Jesus would have kept going, but they wanted him to stay. But even in their acceptance of their invitation to stay with them, this wasn't the thing that made them recognize him either. It's going to be something else. It's going to be something else. And this is it. Verse 30, when he was at the table with them, he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. And when they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It's true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. Their eyes were open and they knew him. Their eyes were open and they recognized him. It was in the breaking of the bread that caught their attention. It wasn't them seeing him on the road. It wasn't their talking with him on the road. It wasn't his voice on the road. It wasn't even the acceptance of their invitation to stay with him on the road that made them recognize him. It was in the breaking of the bread. Now, why? Why was it the breaking of the bread? There was something about the way that he broke the bread that caused their eyes to be open and for them to know him. Here's the thing. Jesus had broken bread before. Matthew 11, he took five loaves and fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed it, broke it and gave loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitudes. In Matthew 15, he took seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them and gave them to his disciples and his disciples gave them to the multitude. And on Matthew 26, the night that he instituted the Lord's Supper, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body. Jesus took bread and broke it many times. What was it about this time? Here in Emmaus, it's something else. It's something else that would open their eyes so that they would know him. That would open their eyes so that he would recognize them. There was something about the way that he broke the bread that identified him. And it must have been overwhelming because... These two men, Luke says, rose up that very hour and went seven miles back to Jerusalem to tell the eleven and tell them all that had happened on the road and how he was known to them. They, they emphasize that, by the way. He was known to them in the breaking of the bread. There's something about it. There's something about the way that he broke it. Can that be said of us? That we are recognized as disciples of Christ by the way in which we break the bread. Can we be identified as imitators of Christ by the way in which we break the bread? Do we break bread as he broke bread? 
Do we break bread as he broke bread with the 5,000, giving true thanks? Do we break bread as he broke bread with the disciples in the upper room by recognizing it as his body? Here's the thing. If the composition of the bread and the cup were important, and they are, we understand that it has to be unleavened bread, and it has to be fruit of the vine. It can't just be any old bread, and it can't just be any old liquid to drink. The composition of the bread and the cup are important. Then what about the way? What about the way in which we take and break the bread? The way that we celebrate the Lord's Supper. If an unbeliever were to observe our observance of the Supper, what would he or she say about us? Would they recognize us as disciples? Would they see the way that we break the bread and know who we are? Are we haphazard about it? Are we nonchalant about it? It's no big deal. Is it just rote ritual that we go through that something we need to check off our list? Are we in such a hurry to get it over with that there's no spiritual significance to it? Do we know what we are doing once we have the supper in our hands? Do we? Is it we? Is it what we deliver in these, these sermons, these table talks that, that are helpful to, to everyone in focusing their thoughts upon the Christ and his word? And maybe it was something that he did as he broke the bread that caused these two men to finally recognize him. Maybe, though, it was something that he said. I'll suggest to you that Paul gives us some idea of what we should be doing in the way we break the bread in 1 Corinthians 11, if you'll turn there. A passage I know we know, but plays into the idea here this morning. Verse 23 of chapter 11, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup in the Lord of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself in this way and let the bread and let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many are sick and ill among you and have fallen asleep. And if we were properly judging ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are dis disciplined so that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, welcome one another. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Jesus knew who he was. Every time he broke the bread, he knew who he was, and he knew what he was doing. It would represent something much larger than the gesture that was happening while it was happening. It would go so much further than just that moment. He knew that he was the Messiah. He knew that he was the Son of God, and he knew that he was our Savior. And every time that he broke the bread, he cast a shadow of him on his cross until even now, because he knew who he was then and who he is even still now. And this time with these two travelers, he was eating this bread new in his kingdom as its new king. That's why it was different. That is why it was different. The last time... Jesus broke bread. It was still, as he said in John 2, early in the book, the hour had still not yet come for him. And he knew that the kingdom of God was near. It still was near. When he says that in Matthew chapter 4, at the time that he took the Last Supper, the kingdom was still near, but it had not yet come. And he had not yet been betrayed into the hands of men and been killed and resurrected. But now, on this day, he had... 
All the other times that he broke bread, he had not yet been betrayed into the hands of men. The kingdom was still near, but not at hand. And his hour had not yet come. But now, with these two travelers, his hour had come. The kingdom was here. And he had been resurrected. And now he could take his supper new in his kingdom. And all authority on heaven and on earth had been given to him. Yes, it was different this time because he was different this time. Jesus knew who he was every time he broke it. The question is, do we? Do we know who we are? Paul tells us that as we break this bread, we are to examine ourselves and to do so in a worthy manner. And the answer to the question is, do we know who we are? The answer is, we are his. And he is our king. And examining ourselves against his word will too make our hearts burn and our eyes open. And these two travelers on the road to Emmaus realized that their Lord had been walking with them all along. You see, some news can't wait. Some news can't wait. And we've all walked that road, haven't we? Unable to see him, though he walks beside us. It's hard to recognize him when we're discouraged. But he's there, and we don't understand. We feel helpless, and we don't have the answers. We can't see him, but remember the scriptures then, and our hearts will burn, and our eyes too will be opened. Just know this. Jesus walks with us still. And we eat the supper this morning new in his kingdom. And he is here. So as we break bread, let's take Paul's admonition, knowing who we are when we take it. Because we know who he is while we take it as well. And let's break it in a manner worthy of the one who first broke it. 